section and I'm going to perform this shift operation on it and all we're going to do is it's the same old shift operation we're just going to make sure that it's a 180 degree turn on the Y axis so you right click on it and set that up click on the object and we'll see it rotate 180 Now we position these objects in the conventional way by working out the end point first of the object where you want to fix them to and then just add half of their length again to find the right Z. Just what we've been doing for the whole tutorial. I'll leave that up to you and I'll leave the sizes of these. I haven't explained the sizes of these things but it's just uh, they're not right anyway, so just, just uh, see what you think would be a good size. And finally we drag and drop another cube for our fuel tank. Find out the measurements off the plans. And I think this one's about a metre by three metres by the width of the base. And you can just use those measurements, that'll be fine. Once again, if, you use, if you're building a real locomotive off plans, that's when it becomes important. I've just grabbed some any old plans and we're just, the technique is the main thing here. The, the measurements aren't important. Uh, but you do need, I have got a, a set of measurements that I'm working from, but you'll find that you'll just, if you can get hold of some real plans, use those and you'll, it'll be much better for you to know. You'll, you'll get used to working with your own measurements. And we're just going to chamfer the all the edges on the fuel tank to give it a nice rounded off appearance. And then using our knowledge of positioning we'll place the fuel tank in the right spot and it'll sit nicely under there and fill in a big gap that was a bit uh, weird looking for a while with the model. Now I just realised there is one other part missing and that's the bogey support and I'm just going to take a cube and scale it to one metre wide by about two metres and position that right up between the bogies and we'll just position that based on the central axle so that'll give us the Z position the X will be zero and the Y position will be from the bottom edge of the base down half of the to find that edge you go down from the actual Y position of the base by half of its thickness and then to position the bogey support go down further half of its thickness or height and that'll that'll that's to find the position for the bogey support then we copy that bogey support and the position will be the the same but negative for the Z and all the other positions will be identical so that's pretty easy that's another benefit of working from zero, for having your model centered. Any Z measurements on a on a symmetrical locomotive like this, or at least underneath is symmetrical, are just negative and you can just mirror the measurements. 